So in part 1, I destroyed my first snowblower build and now I'm building a quick attach snowblower using a Barco 44, which I mount to the loader of my tractor, cause front mount is better for me, for reasons I explained in the first episode. So far I build a quick attach system and modify the gearbox to receive a pillow shaft which I got from Vivor and now I need to work on the powertrain of the snowblower. Yep, that bit. And I'll start by bringing back to life this crankshaft driven, front mounted electric clutch that, yes, this little Massey came equipped with. Hey! Oh. <laughs> well, okay, first bad sign the spine coupling is completely worn out. Well, I'll take care of that later, cause first I need to know if at least the clutch is still working. No fucking way. Haha! <laughs> it still works! <laughs> oh! So the electromagnet is in real bad shape. Also, there's a bunch of shims and spacers, and pretty sure these are important to keep a tight gap between the magnet and the steel plate. Okay, this is a bit of a side story, but note that I'm only wearing a t-shirt, cause we're still in summer. You see, I started working months in advance on this project, cause I wanted to be prepared for next winter. By the way, this is the plate that the electromagnet pulls to lock the pulley, and it does that through those slots. Anyway, back to the side story. We're in summer and I'm only wearing a t-shirt and I just got a new Wish chainsaw that I never played with. And my backyard is a mess. Maybe I could do a bit of cleaning. I mean, we're just in July, so got plenty of time for the snowblower, right? Oh, and I just finished building this backhoe. Maybe I can remove a bit of dirt to expand the backyard. Oh, and we could have some gravel. Oh, and yes, <laughs> I've got those forks. And I always wanted to build a padded fork attachment for my little Massey. And while being at it, why not build some racking and place all my loose stuff on pallets? So, yeah. Now we're deep into fall and I'm back working on the clutch wearing a winter coat. So that's why I think I might have ADHD. You see here, I remove a snap ring from a groove in the housing, so logically, I should push on the other side of the shaft to remove the shaft with its bearing. Or maybe not. Uh, or maybe so. Well, it's too late anyway, because one of the bearings is cracked. As an old wise monk once said, if you exploded the bearing backwards, you should have due to pushing. Uh, yeah, it sucks. <clears throat> you know when you tell your wife, Honey, I'm gonna be in the garage for only half an hour. Gonna be back soon, I promise. And this shit happens? Ladies, that's why we're stuck in here. There we go. Uh, I've got a bunch of semi-old bearings. Maybe I can get lucky. I'm looking for a um, 6205. What are those? Ooh, 6205! <laughs> nice! So it's not super obvious, but that section is a bit bigger by a few thou than the middle section. And not the best design, but at least now I know it. So I don't have a sand blaster boot yet, so I'm using a bunch of different wire wheels and I try my best to remove the rust. I'm also cleaning the frame, cause you see every section of the tractor that I worked on was cleaned and painted. So far I've done the steering column, the cluster, a bit of the rear, the SSQ, the muffler and the seat. I know now it looks more like a patchwork, but once I fix every single section of the tractor, I should end up with an almost brand new machine. At least that's the goal. 
Here I use the opportunity to remove one half of an old hinge. And yes, that plate is sandwiched with the section that holds the loader. So even though I added studs and clamps to hold the loader in place, I'm keeping a hand on it. I know, it's probably as effective as a safety squint. So that half inch is the artifact proof that this little Massey once had a front mounted snowblower, uh, thus the electric clutch. After that, a bit more cleaning, and I also took the time to unbend some dents. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna ever reach the level of my good buddy Austin Coulson, who restores old trucks and lifts, but I'm getting there, slowly. Kids, don't try this at home, I'm what you can call a pro, I mean I try dumb stuff in case it makes good content, and that was lame. Okay, this electromagnet is in real rough shape, gonna try to fix it with some GB weld. GB well was not curing. Maybe if I had a bit of heat. Uh, remember the spine coupling? Uh, to fix it, I just welded a key stuck and machine a groove on the shaft. It's pretty solid now. Maybe even a bit too much. Since I fixed all the parts, now I can rebuild the clutch. Uh, now pressing that shaft in the right direction. I gotta say, the GB weld on the electromagnet came out perfect. Okay, it's probably hard to figure it out, but I shouldn't have so much play with this plate. Remember 3 minutes ago, when I said that there was a bunch of shims and spacers and they must be important? Well, it seems that having started the disassembly months ago, I might have thrown away these rusted parts during a cleanup. But with a bit of mat in a lane, I made a custom spacer and I was back in business, ready for a test. Uh, so far everything seems to work perfectly. So I'm gonna perform a very non-scientific test and see if I can make the clutch slip. <sighs> yep, it's impossible. Oh, and the magnetic field is quite strong too. <laughs> Right, let's tackle the bit we all been waiting for, the connection between the tractor and the snowblower. First major problem, I need to invert the rotational direction from the clutch. The snowblower needs it to be counterclockwise, but the tractor's output is clockwise. Second problem, the clutch is directly coupled to the crankshaft, meaning it can reach 25 repens at full throttle. And from my guesstimation from my previous snowblower build, plus analysis of my PDO's RPM and the alignment of the moon with Venus, I think I should reduce the rotational speed by half, targeting about a thousand ripens. So I'll get two birds with one stone with this system. I'm gonna machine a small top pulley, add two idlers, which one of them will be the belt tensioner, and have a bigger driven pulley, which will be twice the diameter of the top pulley to get the RPM reduction of 2 to 1. Also, by following the belt routing, you can see that I'm gonna invert the rotational direction. And yes, I could use a gearbox or more complex systems, but four pulleys and one belt, that's as simple as it gets. All right, let's start building the main support. Hey! Done. Alright. That one's done too. Done, 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 ba -ba 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 -ba.
Now for the clutch pulley. And no, I won't reuse the original pulley. It's bent and way too big. Cause if I was to reuse it, the output pulley will need to be enormous. Thus reducing the ground clearance to fit the bigger pulley with the idlers. And I'll spare you with all the machining that was involved in producing such a part. But I want to share with you a small shop tip, which is number 79. I was about to grind and shape a high speed steel tool to machine the specific angles that the pulley needs to drive a V-belt. Since we need 20 degrees, I can set my leg compound to this angle and using a cutting tool I can machine quickly and dirty these tapered faces. Unfortunately, I had to reuse the clutch existing bolt pattern which meant machining through the pulley. But that's okay because I gotta say the end result is quite good looking. And the fit is... Nice. Alright, next big piece to produce is the driving shaft, the one that will link the pulley to the PDO shaft. And to do so, uh, because I want to machine the big pulley out of plastic, I know, don't tell me, mistakes were made, but anyway, since I want to make that pulley out of plastic, I decided to use a flange instead of a keyway to transfer the power from one to the other. And shop it number 80. If by any chance you do have on hand the right size split color, you can use it as a welding fixture on the shaft. It's surprising how square and through everything will end up. And no, you don't need to weld your clamp. Uh, this is not shop tip number 81, it's more like shop goof 3665. Mm -hmm. See? Square! Yeah, but I did machine it anyway, just in case. Now for the big pulley, and yes, I had on hand almost the right size V-bell pulley, but since it's gonna be the flat backside of the V-bell that will ride on this pulley, a V-bell pulley won't work. And yes, I'm well aware that double-sided V-bells exist. I use them for a specific application on one of the projects of my day job, but they are way less common than the single-sided one. Again, if it works with a standard belt, sampler is just better. Shop tip number 81, if you want to machine a big part in your lathe but you only have a small chuck, drill three equidistant holes and use them so the tip of the jaws can lock into them. It also has the benefit of being able to machine inner and outer diameters in one single setup, thus gaining precision. I usually don't machine plastic, it's not fun, it's a mess, it's everywhere. Sure gonna stick to metal. Ugh. Ah, that's what I was looking for. To complete the driving shaft and to be able to connect it to the PDO shaft, I bought a spline reducer which fits snugly with the shaft and now I just need to weld it in place. Now that I completed all the parts, it's time for the final assembly. So apparently I cannot put the clutch in with the pulley on. So if you're not familiar with the universal shop language, you're about to hear some mainly screams. And for the uninitiated, these screams mean that the parts fit. But just barely. What I did here is to weld some brackets to the tractor's frame, so next summer it's gonna be pretty easy to unbolt that system and store it away. Until next winter. Drop it till you make it. Now I'm ready for the first test. So as of right now, the wiring is not done and I'm using some jumper cables for the first test. And for those of you who are familiar with me testing things for the first time, you will recognize my typical poker face reaction. Yeah! Ah, classic Vinny. 
Is it just me or there's that morbid wish of touching spinning things, especially with gloves? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but uh, yeah, don't do that. Now let's cut the PDO chef and do the first try with the snowblower. Ah, there we go. Excellent, everything seems to work fine and I just need to complete the wiring and then we could blow some snow. Quickly, I tested how much time it will take me to connect the snowblower to the loader. And yes, I did struggle connecting the PDO shaft to the tractor, but nonetheless, it was pretty quick. We're talking a minute and a half? Very reasonable. Alright, let's blow some snow. Uh, well, I mean, more like frozen ice blocks. Two things come up from this test. First, there was a lot of downslip on the clutch, and I can dig some really big holes with the snowblower, because it hacks like a big bucket. I mean, now there's a shit ton of gravel on my lawn. Nice. Hmm, that's not a good sign when you find a lot of plastic shavings just after a few minutes of operation. Okay, after further investigation, the belt, not having a perfectly flat back, machined itself on the pulley and also created a flat spot. Again, it's really weird that it machine itself would occur. What? Oh, sorry. What? How come? It's, it's in aluminum now. What? With a knurling? It's nice. So with that magically appeared pulley, we can do the final test. But stick around after, because other mistakes were made. Noob mistake. I directly connected the clutch electromagnet through a switch and I knew that this thing was pulling a lot of juice. Kinda hard to see but I melted the two connectors on that poor chinesium switch but it was an easy fix with a relay. Second mistake. I gave a second chance to my skid shoes and since they are not adjustable I cannot raise the snowblower high enough and now more gravel end up on my lawn. Spring's gonna be fun. So I need to fix that. Now I have just about half an inch of clearance and for the beginning of the season, for when my driveway is not yet frozen solid, that gap will work perfectly. Last piece that I need to fix is my loader's levers.
I plan on using the levers from my unused pool valve from my backhoes project, but let me tell you that I'm Canadian without telling you that I'm Canadian. Okay, for all the moms who are watching this video, I know that the spinning shaft could be dangerous, just like the ogre or the b-bell system, uh, but just to be safe. There you go, it ain't dangerous now, because it has a sticker on it. And also, I put chains. You see how I like to please my moms? That's a weird phrase. So at least the pedio shaft will not disengage and transform itself into a thousand ripon spinning nunchuck. And with the chains, that gives me about 10 inches of clearance, and that's more than enough. So there you have it, this is my 56 inch wide, front loader mounted snowblower. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more projects like this, and heads up to my website for merch and project plans.